So let's talk about the work done by uh, kinetic friction. But before I get to that, I, 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 I didn't assign it, but you really should read section 7.6, okay? Um, but because uh, we, we, all, we have one form of energy or one way of storing energy uh, talked about already, and that is uh, kinetic energy, right? So we, say we have kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is, right, the, the energy uh, that an object has because it's, it has mass and it's moving. Energy due to moving mass. Okay? And remember what energy is. Energy is the capacity to make changes to your environment. Okay? And so if you've got kinetic energy, you can make changes to your environment. Okay, did anybody watch Holiday slide into Scooter Row last night? Uh, during the Giants, uh, you guys didn't watch the baseball game, did you? Anyway, this guy, uh, the Giants were trying to turn a double play. And uh, Scooter Row is the uh, second baseman for the Giants. And he uh, and Holiday was trying to break up the double play, and he slid right into him and did work on Scudero's hip, and actually caused an injury. So, uh, using his kinetic energy, it was actually a really dirty play. All right, but in any case, um, kinetic energy gives you the capacity to, you know, do stuff to make uh, changes to your environment. All right. Well, um, and remember when you do work. Let's take a look at a frictionless situation, right? So here's my uh, my crate, which has a certain mass, and let's say v naught equals zero, but I apply a force to the object through a displacement. Keep everything simple in the same direction, and so the work done on this massive object means I'm transferring energy into the object, right? Somebody has some energy, some outside agent has some energy and is transferring that energy into the moving object, right? They're pouring energy by pushing on it through this displacement and they're adding, and they're giving it what kind of energy, right? They're giving it kinetic energy. So when it gets over here, it's it now all of a sudden it's got mass, but it's also moving. And so the work done by that outside agent poured energy into this guy right here. Now, this guy right here, just the crate, in, in this uh, scenario, the crate here is my system. And so somebody from outside of my system transferred energy into my system and gave it to the, the crate. Okay, but that energy had to come from somewhere. It had to come at, uh, somebody had some energy and delivered it to this uh, massive object. So they have less energy, we've got more energy. Our system does. Well, let's, let's uh, take a look at a situation similar to this now. Here's my crate again on wheels, and it's moving really fast. Okay? But then somebody applies a force to it to make it stop. And it takes this far to stop. Okay? So, so what's, what's happening here? The energy, this object had kinetic energy, but somebody did negative work on it, right? They applied a force that's in the opposite direction of the displacement. They slowed it down. So they took its energy away. Now, where did that energy go? We don't really know uh, in this situation. It doesn't say, okay? Um, it, but it had to go, but here's the point. This thing had energy. 
Then when you bring it to a stop, so here's V naught and here's V. If you bring it to a stop, that energy had to go somewhere. It, if this is the boundary of my system, it, the energy left my system. This force took that energy away. Okay? And, um, and so if you can think of energy as this, this uh, substance-like thing, although you can have this uh, negative uh, substance, if you can think of the stuff that gets poured from one container into another, people you know, give you energy, people take you, the energy away. Okay, that's a really a useful way of thinking about it. Now we are going to talk about uh, where uh, the energy goes. Suppose I, well, I'm trying to draw that flat. So here's my flat horizontal surface. Here's my crate. And this is going to be very similar to this problem right here. Except now there's friction. There's kinetic friction. And so this object starts with a you know initial velocity in this direction and then you, you you go a certain displacement and now it's stopped. I mean here's here's the situation I'm talking about, right? I mean this isn't a crate but it's a calculator. If it comes into the picture with velocity but it comes to a stop. Dude, I, I look pretty good, actually, huh? OK. So the calculator, when it was over here, it was moving. It had kinetic energy. But then at the end, it has no more kinetic energy. So kinetic friction right, is the force that's at, at, at work here. Ooh. And it took that energy away. It took the kinetic energy away. So here's my, here's my, uh, let me zoom back in. So here's my, the boundary of my system, right? And this object had kinetic energy, but now let's draw a free body diagram of this thing. I'll just draw it on the diagram. I tell you not to do stuff, and then I go ahead and do it all the time. Okay, here's a normal force. Again, these forces are not doing any work. They're not really involved in the energy in the energy transfer here. But then I've got a force of friction right here, this kinetic friction. And so it does negative work and it and and you can think of the energy as as leaving my system as it slides from here to here. But my question to you is, where did the energy go? Okay. What you, the stuff that you're saying is absolutely right. Okay. Um, the energy went into the environment. And what it did was it did work on the molecules of the tabletop here and made them vibrate a little bit more. And when you make uh, molecules vibrate, right, uh, they've got more energy in them, right? They're moving. Vibrating molecules, OK, here's cold molecules, right? They, they jiggle, but they don't jiggle very much. Now, what happens when uh, you know something rubs across the surface of, whoa, it made them jiggle more, OK? <laughs> So these molecules have more energy in them. And uh, how can I detect that? I mean, I can detect that these would have more energy. If I, if I were to feel them, they would feel warmer, right? OK, so uh, now the energy that a substance contains um, that's a, uh, because of its temperature we have a name for that. And I'm going to give you the name. And it's very complicated. And, uh, and actually, you do some of that in chemistry. Or, or in physics, uh, you, when you take thermodynamics, you'll deal with it a lot. Um, uh, but we call it in, internal energy.
and internal energy is the energy associated with a uh, um, sorry with the temperature of a substance okay and um, but I like to say internal energy is just uh, jiggliness jiggliness I don't know how to spell jiggliness so I'm just gonna punt okay okay I mean it's a, it's a measure of like how how much you know the, the molecules are randomly vibrating around now if you have a solid that's really warm the molecules are held in place okay there it's a solid the molecules they're moving but they they don't really move around each other they're kind of fixed um, in a liquid if you warm up a liquid now in, in a liquid the molecules are allowed to slide around each other that's why the, a liquid can fit any any shape that it's given and in a gas they're just flinging all over that's not coming across very well is it I don't know in a gas the, the the molecules are just flying all over the place and bashing into the walls bashing into each other but they're not sticking together okay but but the more internal energy they have the higher the temperature right and also the you know so that's and that's kind of kinetic energy at the molecular scale internal energy uh, is associated with the kinetic energy plus the stickiness it's complicated you can think of a, 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 a chemical bond as being like a little spring that attaches molecules together and you, you pull them apart they've got a little bit of, of energy associated with it you compress it and so they vibrate you know like a mass spring system so internal energy is kind of complicated but what you're doing here when you're dealing with kinetic friction is that the kinetic energy of my moving object as it slides to a stop it increases I mean where did that energy go this thing had kinetic energy here now it has no kinetic energy over here what happened to the energy you have to account for it it went into the uh, it, uh, it went into the tabletop and also it made some sound and it you know it just it left my I, my system here into the environment as heat and heat heating is when you you know when that heat moves across that boundary you're increasing the internal energy of the environment the the random motion of the molecules okay now if you look uh, in the in the book uh, now hey in, in your in your um, chemistry classes we had a symbol for energy moving across a boundary as heat as heating what symbol was that maybe it was I don't know that's wasn't it Q I think it was Q I'm guessing it's Q okay capital Q that's 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 energy either entering or leaving your system uh, as uh, as heat as internal energy okay and of course, hey, thermodynamics is a great um, is a great subject to study. It's not on the AP Physics C outline, so we don't really cover very much of it, um, which is unfortunate. But you know, the outline is long enough as it is. But um, there you go. So when you have a problem here, um, and in in section uh, uh, seven point seven situations involving kinetic energy I, I don't really like the, the way the book handled this very well they they're, they're making it much more complicated than it should be um, so when solving problems involving kinetic friction especially kinetic friction that is slowing an object down like a, a you know you, you you in this case you have a, a, a crate you know slowing to a stop um, uh, or you, you, you're driving your car and you slam on the brakes. Uh, the, the way I, I look at it is, um, well, you have a change in energy there, right? You, you just draw the free body diagram. If here's your car, all right, and you know, you, uh, 
Ooh, that looks like a little Nissan. All right, and um, you know, when it's moving and you slam on your brakes, you know, well, I mean, what's the free body diagram look like? You got mg, you got the normal force, and you've got this kinetic friction. And it's going to do work. So just figure out how much work it does. But in this case, the work is negative because it's transferring energy out of the, the kinetic energy of your car. And it's, where is that energy going? It's going into the heating of the environment. So you read the book, you go, oh, what is this? Um, the heating of the environment, we, in chemistry, you call it Q. In our textbook, they call it delta E internal. That's a change in the internal energy of the environment. All right, because this is my system. This is the environment outside my system. So where's that kinetic energy going? It's going into the internal energy. I mean, just rub your hands together. I mean, you're taking that energy and you're heating up the surface of your hands. Okay, that's pretty easy to, to understand. So I think uh, this is one of the few times, I, I really like our textbook, by the way. I think it's great. But I think in this case, they overcomplicate it. Okay, so what you have to do is just think about energy being transferred in or out of our system. And if you're using kinetic uh, friction, you're usually transferring energy out of your system and heating uh, uh, the environment, adding to the internal energy of the environment. Because whatever energy leaves my system, an equal amount of energy enters my environment, right? That's conservation of energy. Now, there is a situation where there's, um, where there is uh, kinetic friction that can actually add to, that can actually do positive work. Okay? So here's a, a kinetic friction doing positive work. Okay? Here's a dragster. Right? So here's, here's the old-fashioned dragster. Here's the driver sitting back here, steering wheel. Here's the engine. You know, here's the little tiny front wheels and, and you got to have that spoiler to make it, you know. All right, so what happens to a dragster? Okay, now actually a dragster, a good dragster, a, a drag race driver will never peel out. Because if you peel out, if mm -hmm. your wheel spins faster than uh, it should, you'll have what kind of interaction between the wheel and the, and the ground. It, it, the wheel, the, the, it'll slide across the surface, right? The, the, your your, your uh, tire right here will actually peel out. Right? It'll skid. It'll leave a skid mark on the road. That's bad because uh, kinetic friction is not as great as static friction. The best drivers will, uh, will approach the maximum possible static friction between the wheels and the road, and they will accelerate down the road the fastest because they'll get the most net force pushing them down the field, down the, uh, the racetrack. But if you blow it, if you, if you pop that, you know, your clutch, and you got too much torque to the wheel, and now all of a sudden it starts spinning out, what kind of friction exists between the wheel and the road? You've got kinetic friction. And if, but if I draw a free body diagram of my, of my dragster, I've got kinetic friction like this. Of course, I've got you know, gravity and normal force that are canceling each other out. But now I've got kinetic friction. And, and, the, kinetic, and the kinetic friction will do positive work, right? Because my displacement. My delta x will be to the right, and my kinetic friction will also be to the right. Now, where does the energy come from to do this work? Ultimately, in this problem, where did that energy start? In the, excellent, in the gas, in the gasoline of the tank. And then this engine uh, transfers that, that energy in a very complicated process and transfers that energy mechanically through the wheels. But here's why this is bad. You're doing work, if you're doing, if you peel out, yes, you're doing work, 
on the car. You're increasing the, the uh, dragster's kinetic energy, right? But what are you also doing? Because there's kinetic friction, you're also increasing the internal energy of the road. You're heating up the road. You skid on the road and, and your tires will get very hot. Okay, I mean, it, it's, and all of that is energy that could have gone into your car. So you don't want to exceed, you know, you, you don't want, if you're, if you're a dragster and you want to, in, you know, go as fast as you can, uh, you don't want kinetic friction doing positive work. You want static friction doing positive work, and that's what will win the race for you. Yes? I think I got confused. So the wheels, you see they're spinning so fast that it goes into kinetic friction? Yeah. Wait. Okay. Now, I, I, you know, I, I could probably find a YouTube video that will show this, but you've probably done this on your car, okay? All right, you've never done it. All right. Well, let me tell you a little story. Okay, my grandpa had a 64 Chevy pickup, and I drove around. And this thing was a big monster truck. I mean, it, 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 was, it had a 450 V8 in it, very, very powerful engine. Um, uh, and it was it was meant to work. It was meant uh, and um, now my my buddy had a little uh, Datsun Datsun before Nissan Datsun 510, and it was a quick little car. So you know, and I'm a brand new driver and I'm stupid. So he he comes up to me and I'm in my, my truck. I'm waiting. We're going to drive off to another friend's house. So I'm waiting for him. I'm sitting in my truck and he comes driving up next to me, in. In, in his car, and so I'm, I'm looking over, and so we're, we're parked next to each other on the street, right, and he starts revving his engine, and he revs it, and he goes, ring, 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 and then he pops the clutch and goes, Arr! and he, and he kind of scoots down the road very quick, so then he, then he stops, and then he backs up, and he, he points at me, he goes, you do it, you do it, you know, so of course, peer pressure kicks in, I've never done this with my grandpa's truck before, so I revved this engine, and it sounds like a a jet aircraft. I, mean, <laughs> I rev it, and I'm kind of scared. And I pop the clutch. Oh my God! I thought it was the end of the world. Okay, here's the problem. My my right my right wheel was on gravel. My left wheel driving wheel was on pavement. Okay, it starts spinning out. I'm not even moving, and my back wheels are just spinning so fast that they're skidding on the road. That's what I'm talking about. It was throwing up rocks and dirt on the on the on the left side of my car. It was throwing rocks and dirt and dust in the air. On the right side, it was sending smoke because it was getting so hot that the, the I was burning rubber. Okay, that's where the expression comes from: burning rubber. It was kinetic friction. I hardly moved. I was just sitting in place, just causing. A, and then the, then it started moving forward. Anyway, I'm totally panicked. My foot slips off the off the thing, I, you know, and I, I come to a rolling stop, my heart is racing, and then, uh, and then my friend, you know, and I, I, so I come to a stop, my friend comes running up to me, and, or uh, comes, comes up, and, and he's just, he just bows down. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I hang my, my, my arm over the steering wheel trying to act all bad, you know, like, <laughs> like I knew this was going to happen, but, but it, it was, it was total, it, it was total chaos, and I was completely, <laughs> completely freaked out by the whole thing. So, um, um, so that's what, so that's what we're talking about. That, that spinning out here, yeah, it did make me move forward, but most of the, I think most of the energy went into the ground. Okay, most of that energy was transferred into the ground. Because like I was just confused because when you have static friction is when you're just you know like cruising on the road like your tires yeah. are just like each. Okay, when you're uh, static friction, and when you're driving normally, not like an idiot, okay, when you're driving normally, it's static friction that accelerates you forward, and then when you, you apply the brakes, it slows you down. It, so it gives you, it, 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 it does positive work when you're accelerating, it does negative work when you're decelerating. But so then, but when your wheels are like spinning like crazy, it turns back into like kinetic friction? Well, kinetic friction means that the two surfaces are sliding with respect to each other. When a tire is, when your tire is rolling on the ground, 
Okay, if I've got, here's the ground, and you're rolling, okay, and you're moving forward, and this is rolling. If you took a, a little snapshot, here's the uh, surface of the road, and here's your tire comes down, and there's a little flat spot, right? Yeah. And then your tire continues up. There is no sliding going on there. And yet there is a, 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 a force, either forward or backwards, to the tire. That's static friction because there's no, there's no sliding between the surface, okay? You got oh, it? Oh, and then when it's going fast enough, it's actually sliding on it. Oh, I get yeah. it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. All right, well, that is, uh, that's it for today. Just when you're working these problems in this section, section 7.7, .7, just remember that it's just, it's just friction. And where is that energy going? Into internal energy in the system. Uh, that is all.